Yeah. Oh, a poppy one. Welcome to Shepton Mowat Prison. Shepton Mowat Prison opened in 1625 as a house of correction until 1773. The prisoners were not separated and were mixed in dark, dank cells, no matter their age, gender or category of crime. In 1773, John Howard was appointed by Parliament to inspect UK prisons. His report said that many prisoners who went in healthy were in a few months emaciated, dejected objects. Some of them had diseases and were dying on the floors in awful cells. Following the 1877 Prison Act, responsibility for the prison was passed to the Prison Commission and was designated as a county goal, responsible for overseeing executions. Between 1930 and 1939, due to the prison population dropping to only 51 min inmates, the prison closed. Between 1939 and 1942, it became a military prison where defaulters from the Army, Navy and RAF, as well as several conscientious objectors were kept. Between 1942 and 1945, the prison became the headquarters of the Disciplinary Training Centre for the United States Army for American soldiers who committed civil crimes while stationed in the UK. It's a bit of a last place, wouldn't you, that you'd expect a prison to have been? The old ships in Maui, I suppose. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Stocks there. The prison became a training prison in 1973 and a Category C prison in 1991. On March 28, 2013, a decommissioning ceremony was held at the prison and it was closed. The Bath Wife Murderer. James Billington. He was born Harry. He was called Harry, wasn't he? He was born Alfred, Alfred. Henry Dainton. On the 25th of May 1957 in Mockton Coombe. He was a stonemason. No, it would have been here, wouldn't it? There. No, that's where it's... Mm. But what is it? Wow, isn't it? No, that Yeah. It's where it's here as well. It said where they're rusty. The rust Yeah. Where yeah. they suggest that with the first execution, the eight-man firing squad failed to put the sandbags behind the condemned man. But a high-velocity bullet shot straight through the man, hitting the stone wall behind. It says one of the bullet ricocheted straight back and into the chest of one of the firing squad members. Oh, that's not good. The burial site. Has the bodies been buried with the grains of the 
prison for a hundred years. Yeah, they tried. What did they try wanting to build something? Yeah. Between 1889 and 1926, seven men were executed by hanging at Shepton Mallet. All had been convicted of murder. Their bodies were buried in the grounds of the prison for over a hundred years. The area was excavated in 2014 and you can see where the tarmac has been relayed. The bodies of the seven men remain there to this day. The prison is now a tourist attraction and open to the public. It's also been used for some TV shows and films. The interior scenes at the fictional Portobello prison in the film Paddington 2 were filmed at Shepton Mallet. In September 2020, Shepton Mallet prison featured in the ITV three-part mini-drama Des, based on the 1983 arrest and trial of Scottish serial killer Dennis Nielsen. The prison also featured in the series 6 of the ITV drama Grantchester. Hard labour yard. It also says they used to pick the fibres out of here. They had to pick the fibres out oh. to make pillars. The there you go. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Sure, it says to make pillars. Yeah, local pillar and that was me. Hmm. Orkham picking, it says. Just to pick all them out. I take it that was a punishment then. So what's this day? Ooh. Ooh, what's that doing? That's supposed to be what they have to do. Oh, but why? Oh gosh. So what's the boot workshop. This is where they made boots. Let's go and find them too. Don't do your whistle. Mm -hmm. 
this, so what's this then? This is part of the infirmary then, is it? Do oh. Go on. The treadmill house in Shetland High Prison had one of the largest treadmills in the country. It was so big that it took 40 prisoners stood side by side to turn it. Prisoners would be set to walk up the never ending staircase to turn the wheel. At Shetland High Prison, this wheel drove sharp and was used to build the court on the other side of the prison wall. This time. Obviously been doing a bit of surgery there. Yes, the the Mill is renowned for having the highest periphery prison walls in the country. The exterior wall was 75 feet high and many of the walls are 3 to 9 feet thick. Very few prisoners have escaped, but the most notorious and dramatic escape attempt was on the 5th of November 1993. Three prisoners who were in the end cell on B-Wing dug a hole through a two-foot wall which connected their cell to the plant room. After squeezing through the hole, they made their escape onto the prison roof. They had to walk over two prison wings and made their way down the 75 feet wall using knotted bed sheets together, but they were soon recaptured. I know, because that was quite a big riot, yeah. wasn't it? Yeah, well, it lasted 25 days, that one. Yeah. Things could turn violent between the prisoners and in an environment with almost no weapons, the prisoners became highly creative in making their own. Weapons confiscated at Shepton Mallet include items such as razor blade comb, a melted tooth toothbrush and a filed down metal tray and even boiling water from the kettle. You wouldn't want to hit him with any of them, would you? Oh, this is... Oh my God. Is that his wardrobe? That won't open. I don't think he'll like... Oh, there's another one. Why oh, not you go? Yeah, that's the holy. Please take care underfoot, on even floor. Mm. Oh, what are you doing? Keeps touching me. Get out of it. I think it's cobwebs. <laughs> there it is, it's cobwebs, we've just seen it. 
He shit himself. <laughs> <laughs> Move that then, let's have a look what's under there. Well, you just have to lift it, haven't you? There, it goes straight down. He said it was getting bigger. Yeah. Is this a cell as well? Yeah, well, this is one of them cells, isn't it, in here? You just weren't going to be in here, would you? Had you been shot in here? Right. I said you could have done it. Don't shut it. Go on, shut it. No, I can't get out, you're not going on anyway, because I've only got rankings. <laughs> I've got You wouldn't want to be in here. No, I'm not sad. This sits on the wall. Good eating. This was the former living accommodation for the governor and his family. There have been no governor living on site since 1930, and the building became an administrative area. Sounds like somebody's got a ghost tube on. That's what they're doing there, isn't it? So it weren't the noise, that noise then, it sounded like somebody whistled and you definitely didn't do it. No chance, no bollocks. No way. Because I was listening to them because I wanted to... It were right up inside of me, yeah. Don't, he's making me feel sick now. I was stood here filming in that room and I was doing a pan. <laughs> right. And I thought one of you two were pissing about behind the door. No, while you're filming. I'm not sure where we were stood. The exercise yard and the rest of the prison wings are raised up one level from ground floor. This is because the original jail from the 17th century lies underneath it. Not another one. The staff that used this room would constantly report things moving from where they were left. Staplers and other stationary items are often left in a mess. The area is next to Air Wing, which is one of the most active areas of the prison for paranormal activity. Air Wing. Watch that uh, floor a bit there. A wing is regarded as the most haunted wing within the prison. Regular sightings of ghosts and people experiencing strange things throughout the wing. We didn't see any ghosts knocking no. about while we were there. It's not a fire in 1904. Nobody died. Nobody died. That's good. In 1952, Airwing held the infamous London gangsters Ronnie and Reggie Cray. They also spent time in other cells throughout the prison, 
And so the story goes, their ghosts so returned open, very often to frighten members of the public, but not on the day we went. This was for when there was a hunger strike or force feeding. The suffragettes while I was in prison. No visit to Shepton Mallet Prison is complete without feeling a few shivers down your spine. With such a long, dark, sinister history, it should come as no surprise to hear Shepton Mallet Prison is considered the world's most haunted prison and one of the world's most haunted buildings. He was the first American um, soldier to be executed. Echoes of the past emerge from the walls, creep out from the cells and ooze from the hidden graveyards, all adding to the atmospheric surroundings even the most level-headed of staff yeah, at the prison awesome. mention areas where they do not like to venture, where something is not as it should be. Many eerie things have been reported by officers, prisoners and current staff as well as visitors. These include seeing apparitions and shadows stirring in the corners, doors slamming on their own, a sensation of being touched, harrowing voices and echoing footsteps, whistles and keys jangling. Kitchen here. All that pain peel. That's not very hygienic, is it? Oh. Not much light in here, was there? No. Got paint peel on it. Dick. I need to uh, double blood pressure tablets, aren't they? This is day wing. Yeah. I don't think it out because there's no lights on. Yeah. These are like showers here on that toilet. Levels 2 and 3 of D-Wing were opened up as a drug rehabilitation unit by Terry Waite, who was held captive in Lebanon from 1987 to 1991. Several art murals on the walls of A and D-Wing, these were painted by the prisoners. Coffee. Get out of it. Stop it. What have I done? B wing is the largest wing in the prison. The cells were initially designed to house only one prisoner. By the 1930s, bunk beds were introduced to help create extra space. 
There are 11 double cells on this wing that were used as triple cells. From 2001, the prisoners' numbers reduced from 340 to 178. These were serving life sentences, so most of the cells returned to single-use cells. False door, he said, didn't it? Because this has been there short because of a boiler behind or something. Yeah, this is the condemned cell, isn't it? So yeah. when you're in you're ready for hanging. Yeah. But they thought they went out there, didn't they? And they used to take them by surprise and tackle them. Through here? Through here, so they haven't got time to think of them. No. The execution room prisoners were kept in the condemned man's cell alongside two prison officers whose job it was to keep the prisoners alive until their execution. You're probably asking yourself why bother to keep the prisoner alive. It was because he had to be sentenced to die by hanging, so that's what was going to happen. Condemned prisoners are not allowed to take their own lives. The execution room you are now stood in is actually the second execution room to be used at Shetland Island Prison. In 1868, executions were carried out in public view. These took place at Ilchester Prison, just outside the prison walls, in a field known as the Gallows Firemakers. From 1868, public executions were stopped in Great Britain, and all executions took place behind closed doors. At Shetland Prison, there was a hanging shed near the entrance on Frithfield Lane. This was used until 1926, during which time seven prisoners were executed. These seven men were buried within the walls of the prison in unmarked graves. Between 1943 and 1945, 16 American soldiers, most of whom were convicted of murder, were executed in the room you are now stood in. One of these prisoners was Private David Cobb, who seldom can visit an A-Wing. The most famous executioner to execute prisoners at Chateaumalic Prison was Albert Mayerpoint. Albert was known for his precision in hangings and revolutionised executions to make them more humane. His fastest execution on record was just seven seconds, getting the condemned man from his cell and through the drop. Opposite the condemned man's cell was the executioner's room. Thomas William Pierpoint conducted most of the hangings at Shepton Mallet, assisted by his nephew, Albert Pierpoint. The executed prisoners would remain hanging for a mandatory one hour post execution. Then the body was taken down and moved to the mortuary. C Wing stands as a separate wing. This was built for female prisoners. The cells were slightly larger as young children would have been accompanied by their mothers into prison. In the Victorian times, the only alternative for children would be to send them to the workhouse, but these were notorious for neglecting the children. During World War II, over 300 tonnes of the nation's treasures were stored on this wing. Things like the Doomsday Book, Guy Fawkes' Confessions and the Magna Carta. They can't tell you which cells they were in, can they? In 1952, the prison held the gangsters Ronnie and Reggie Cray. They were in prison for absconding from national service. We're not sure whether they've stopped in this cell or the other, or any other. We don't know which ones, for sure. As you have seen and heard from one part of the video, David did hear whistling in his ear in the governor's block. Both Shell and Annalise didn't hear it and we're nowhere near David for it to have been one of them. We show you where Shell and Annalise were at the time the whistling was heard. We also heard a cell door slam, but we never caught this on video. We checked and we were the only ones on the wing at that time, which was quite spooky. What do you think? Let us know in the comments if you heard the whistle. Oh, you can only just see his hand, you can't see. <laughs> Gosh, you can't see anything. <coughs> you can't see anything. <coughs> you see his hand. Oh, yeah. It makes you cough. I think the bat's supposed to be at the door for your knees, in it. 
I think so, but obviously not. has been knocked down, aren't it? Yeah. Can I bring that there? Yeah. Yeah. is there. I don't know if that's a uh, thing, isn't it? Truck driver. We would highly recommend a visit to the prison. We spent most of the day there. The staff are very helpful and friendly. There are toilets, an inside area with tables and chairs to eat your packed lunch, plus a drinks machine. the doorway wasn't it to the pauper's graves. The pauper's grave was for many prisoners their final resting place. Behind the wooden door in the wall opposite the prison is believed to lay no, the pauper's no. grave. If you open that, but it's full bit. We hope you enjoyed the video and if you did give us a thumbs up, hit the subscribe button, it's totally free, and press the notification button so you know when we have a new video out. So until next time, see ya!